ayah number 32 to 34. So here in Surah to Noor, ayah number 32, it's mentioned, and marry those among you who are single. And al ayama and the pious of your servants and maid servants, if they be poor, Allah will enrich them out of his bounty and Allah is all sufficient and all knowing. And also in ayah number 32, it's mentioned wa anki hu means uh, from nikaha and you give or give in marriage what al ayama the single min kum among you. So here the people who are in this ayah, the people, the guardians, parents, extended family, grandparents are being addressed, or the entire Muslim ummah is being addressed. Wa anki hu is from nakaha means he got married. Ankaha is to make someone else marry. For example, a father makes his son get married or he gives his daughter in marriage. Al ayama, the plural of aim, one who is single, unmarried, for whatever reason, never married, divorced, widowed. Okay. Also, the command is given to get the righteous among the female and the male. Male slaves married. What is the biggest fear the people have when getting married? The clo the cost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is re reassuring that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enrich them from his bounty. So he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing of the people's need. So nika is halal and zina is haram. So there is a solution to every problem. It is not appropriate to delay marriage for material purpose, i.e. to have an extravagant wedding, perfection uh, lies in Jannah. We shouldn't not be delaying marriage because uh, we want the perfect looking spouse with a perfect career who has material wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands those in charge of the singles to get them married. Hadith, getting married helps ones to lower the gaze and protecting their private parts. One who does not get married is fighting an eternal battle, staying chaste, focus on studies rather than the opposite gender. Hadith, Prophet said, there are three people who have the right of the peace of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who wants to marry to maintain a chaste life. The slave whose master has agreed to buying his freedom when he wishes to pay the sum and one who fights in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith, when someone whose uh, religion and character you are satisfied uh, with ask for your daughter in marriage, then accept. Otherwise, there will be facade, corruption in the earth. What we may think is a perfect spouse will also have flaws. So, in the beginning of this surah, we learn about the criminal sin of zina. Why it is a threat to the preservation of marriage? Why is marriage so important? It is a means of lowering the gaze. It makes a person content. Fulfilling desire is an act of ibadah. It's a part of ibadah. Look at the beautiful religion of us because it prevents one from doing sin and shows the protection of lineage. Proper distribution of inheritance protects a person being iman. This is why it is so important to get the singles married and married people. We must also help to prepare, train girl, girls and boys for marriage. We must teach responsibility to boys and girls from young age. We must treat our teens as grown-ups. So in ayah number 31, this clear ayah includes a group of unambiguous rulings. And firm commands, ayama, and marry those among those who are single, al ayama. This is a command to marry 
and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a young man whoever among you who can afford to get married let him marry for it is more effective in lowering the gaze and protecting the private parts whoever cannot do that then let him fast for it is a protection from him means one who is not getting married what they have to do what is the protection what they have to do start doing the fasting so this is in to sahih hai from hadith and in sunan it was recorded from more than one person that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said marry and have children for i will be proud of you before the nations on the day of resurrection so the word al ayama for i will be proud of you before the nations on the day of resurrection the word al ayama the plural from form of ayin is used to describe a woman who has no husband and a man who has no wife regardless of whether they have been married separated or never been married at all al johri reported this is from the scholars of the arabic language and the word is applied to men and women alike so if they be poor allah will enrich them out of his bounty because allah that is what it is mentioned here in yakun faqara yaghni ham allah min fadli allah will give the fadl allah will give the bounty if they be poor allah will enrich them out of his bounty it was recorded Uh, Ibn Masud said, "Seek the richness through marriage." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "If they be poor, Allah will enrich them out of His bounty." This was recorded by Ibn Jarir also, and Baghavi, and it was reported from Alaid from Muhammad bin Ayn. He said, "The Messenger of Allah, as Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, there are three whom it is a right upon Allah to help: one who gets married, seeking chastity." chastity if a slave who makes a contract with his master with aim of buying his freedom and one who fights for the sake of him so this was recorded by imam ahmad and tirmizi and also prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed the marriage of a woman of a man who owned nothing you understand uh, in uh, giving the mahram uh, like a uh, mahar he don't have anything to give in the mahar a person he has nothing to give in uh, mahar but he is waist trap and could not even buy a ring made of iron so but he still married him to that woman making the mahar as a promise to teach her what quran because he was a learned person he knows the quran so that is the generosity and kindness of allah subhanahu wa taala so let's make the marriages easy and you know and let's get them married on the right time so the command to keep oneself chaste if one is not able to get married what is it let's those who find not financial means for marriage keep themselves chaste until allah enriches them of his chastity so in the following aya aya number 33 and 34 let those who find not financial means means you don't have anything you are completely fuqara you are in need for marriage keep themselves chaste you know everybody can't get married so allah subhanahu wa taala says in ayah number 33 so how one should keep themselves chaste until allah enriches them of his bounty and such of your servants as seek a writing of emancipation means give them such writing if you find that there is good and honesty in them and give them something uh, yourself one of out of the wealth of allah which he has bestowed upon you and force not your slave girls to prostitution you know in uh, the time of jahiliya people used to force for the prostitution that is mentioned here if they desire chastity in order that you may make a gain in their goods of this worldly life but if anyone compels them then after such compulsion allah is forgiving and most merciful in ayah number 
and indeed we have sent down for you ayah that makes things plain an example of those who passed away before you and admonition for those who have taqwa so ayah number 33 and 34 so in this the command to keep oneself chaste if one is not able to get married in ayah number uh, 33 so what is the thing that is mentioned and marry the unmarried among you and righteous among your male slaves and female slaves if they should be poor allah will enrich them but in ayah number 33 what allah says if what if they can't marry because they don't have any means what they should do so that is the thing mentioned uh, over here what one should do about it so but let them who find not the means for marriage abstain from sexual relations and allah enriches them uh, from his bounty and those who seek a contract you know eventual emancipation from among whom your right hand possess then make a contract with them if you know there is with the, them goodness and give them from wealth of allah which he has given you and do not compel your slave girls to anything bad like you know doing uh, any indecent act and forcing them to do the things like uh, which is out of wedlock prostitution and so on but if they desire chastity to seek thereby temporary interest of holy life and if some someone should compel them then indeed allah is to them after their compulsion for giving and merciful then somebody is forcing them to do do the indecent things so allah knows their intention so here we reveal you distinct and clear verses so the hudud the limits are laid out so allah subhanahu wa taala has also given examples of the people who have passed before and allah subhanahu wa taala has told us about past societies so that we can take a lesson and reform so these aya are an admonition for those who fear allah and allah subhanahu wa taala and live a life of taqwa such people respect the limits set by allah in hopes of reward from him only reward is from whom from only allah subhanahu wa taala so allah says we have certainly sent down to distinct verses an example from whom you passed on before and admonition for those who fear allah so this two ayas togetherly so here it talks about like you know you find not any financial means for marriage keep themselves chaste until allah enriches them and this uh, is a command from allah to those who do not have means to get married they are to keep themselves chaste and avoid unlawful things any unlawful things and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a young man who whoever among you can afford to get married let them marry for it is more effective in lowering the gaze and protecting the private parts whoever cannot do that then let him fast for it it is a protection for him like you know everybody can't get married there may be some reasons for it so what they should do in order to keep themselves chaste start fasting so the ahaya is general in meaning and aya in surah an nisa is more specific where allah subhanahu wa taala says and whoever of you have not the mean where with to wed free believing women until his statements but it is better for you that you practice self restraint meaning it is better for you to be patient have sabar restrain from marrying slave girl because any child that is born will be a slave you understand if you marry a slave girl so that children will be obviously they will be also slave and allah is forgiving and merciful and let those who find not the financial means for marriage keep themselves chaste so again and again that is the thing mentioned and the different opinion has been mentioned about the different scholars what they talks about the command to grant slave a grant of contract of emancipation so here and such of your servants are seeking writing of emancipation means giving them such writing if you find that there is good and honesty in them 
means this is a command from allah and to slave owners if their servants ask them for contract of emancipation they should write it for them you understand provide that the servant has some skill and means of earning so that he can pay his master the money that is stipulated in the contract al bukhari and others said to uh, if i know that my servant has money is it obligatory for me to write him a contract of emancipation he said i do not think it can be anything but obligatory amar bin dina said yes i said to ata are you narrating this from anybody he said no then he told me that musa bin anas told him that sirin who had a lot of money asked anas for a contract of emancipation and he refused so he went to umar bin al khattab and he said write it for him and he refused so umar hit him with his whip and recited this aya give them such writing if you find there is a good and honesty in them then he wrote the contract this was mentioned by bukhari so one should write the contract and here some of them said this is about trustworthiness and you know they have any skill of earning that also you should write it and give them some something out of the wealth and allah which has bestowed upon you you know that is a good gesture for them and give them something out of wealth and uh, th- that is a good deed for you and also in this ayah the important thing mentioned prohibition of forcing one slave girl to commit zina because uh, one of the narration we learn abdullah bin ubay in madina he he was uh, doing the uh, enforcement to the women to do such indecent act of prostitution so here it's mentioned that is the time of uh, jahaliya so one should not force if somebody did so allah says allah is most forgiving and merciful because somebody enforced them and they did it and now they ask forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't want to go on such a way again then allah will forgive them jazakallah khairan kaseer